Welcome Eurovision fans! It's time to talk about Sweden at Eurovision 2019. Sweden will be represented by John Lundvik with the song Too Late for Love. If I had to describe this song in one word, it's going to be kind of easy for me. Happiness. Pure happiness. When I listened to the song for the first time, I just felt the happiness and joy radiate, radiating can't speak, <laughs> through my body the entire time. I, uh, God, I got this warm feeling in my heart and it just kind of went all throughout my body. I uh, really enjoyed listening to the song and I've enjoyed listening to it every time since. I still get that happy feeling. It's very much a pick-me-up song if I want to turn my day around, if I'm a little sad or I'm tired or anything. I can listen to this song and instantly be lifted up again and uh, it's just a very nice, happy song. It's kind of funny because at the same time it's uh, a bit of a desperation get her back kind of song where he's singing, is it too late for us? Is it too late for love? But he's trying to be so positive and these are the reasons why uh, we can have love. I can be this for you. I can be that for you. So it's kind of on one spectrum, it's a little bit of a desperation like, uh, this is our last shot. Come on, give me a chance. I can do this for you. I can be this man for you. I can be this, this person for you. Um, but it is so positive And so, uh, he's got such a good outlook on, you know, Hey, this is what we could be. This is who we could be. So, uh, rather than being a sad, depressing song, like, I could lose her forever. It's here's the optimism. Here's the hope. So happiness, joy, optimism, hope. That's what I take from this song as far as words go uh, for describing the song. So John Lundvik is a singer, songwriter, and former track and field athlete also. He was a sprinter and he competed for the athletic team IFK, spelled V. A-X-J-O, because I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> he also composed songs for films and movies, as well as The Wedding of Victoria, The Crown Princess of Sweden, and Daniel Westling. Uh, the song was titled, When You Tell the World You're Mine, in 2010. That's when that was written. In 2016, John wrote and performed All About the Games. And this represented Sweden for the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Uh, in 2018, John's song My Turn was a part of Melody Festivalen, and he attempted to represent Sweden in the Eurovision Song Contest in Lisbon. He qualified directly into the finals, and his song actually finished third overall at Melody Festivalen. He also represents the United Kingdom this year as a songwriter for the song Bigger Than Us, sung by Michael Rice. John had a hand in writing and composing Too Late for Love, his 2019 Swedish entry here, along with Andreas Stone Johansson and Anders Rethrov. Rethrov. <laughs> so what's good about this song? John has an incredible voice and stage presence about him. His smile lights up the room and he has that feeling of being genuine and authentic in his voice and his music. The song is optimistic and open. It's hopeful, even in a time that could be considered dark, which you could feel like you're losing somebody. He's reaching out and shining a light and talking about what it can be. Sweden is very good at producing their songs. They are very polished musically and vocally. Too Late for Love is no exception. It's ready to take the stage at Eurovision. The staging is very nice, but it's not overblown this year. I enjoy that it's not too much, as in the past, my opinion, Sweden focused a lot more on staging and not enough attention was given to the artist, as in 2017 and 2018. So rather than having staging that is too much and takes away from the singer itself, the staging complements and it focuses on John and it's not much of a distraction for the audience, in my opinion. So perhaps this is the reason I feel the song is more real and genuine. There are moments where the song slows down and the camera focuses on John's face and it makes the performance very intimate and special, in my opinion. I love how they use the staging effectively to light the dark also. 
it really plays well when you've got the choral singers in there and the lights are flashing and then the quiet moments where it darkens and you focus on John and the close-ups. They really do good with the camera angles and work here. I love the choral backing. The singers do a great job in blending their voices with John, and it's not overpowering in the performance. It feels like a very balanced and equal performance between the backing and the lead singer. It's a wave of gloriousness as far as the vocal performances from both parties in this song. So what are some potential problems with the song? Regardless of how I feel personally about the song, many are going to call the song generic, bland, boring. You know the buzzwords. That's just the way life is. You can't please everybody. Is this song a big risk for Sweden? No, it's a song that hits the notes of a popular song. It doesn't go off the course of being a song intended for a large-scale audience. So, like most Swedish entries, it doesn't have that element of being Swedish music that is authentically, authentically Sweden. So, many may not like that. I know many are clamoring for people to hear a song in Swedish again, though Sweden doesn't seem to have any interest in going that direction. So, if that's what you want... Maybe someday, maybe not. The one big blemish that I can think of has nothing to do with Too Late for Love itself, but it's something I'm going to bring up regardless because it bothers me a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Many feel that it's, well, frankly, crap that John is representing Sweden, but he has another song and interest in the contest in the United Kingdom. Uh, Bigger Than Us was a reject for Sweden. John isn't alone here, though, because composers like Thomas Giesen have made a name for selling themselves and their songs to multiple countries in a given year. Still, personally, I'm not a big fan of this. Competing with one song with one country and then also having your stake or name in another country represent your song in the same year, it's just not a good look. I do blame the United Kingdom more for this, though, because why the hell can't you find a competent singer and songwriter in the country that's a birthplace of rock and roll? You can't find anybody to write a song in your own country and put out your own music? You're the United Kingdom. That's a huge music cornerstone. So I don't put the blame on John so much as I do on the United Kingdom for not looking for internally for artists and songwriters and stuff like that. So, I don't look at this as a stain on John, but some other people do. It's worth mentioning, but it doesn't change how I personally feel about John's song, Too Late for Love. Musically, I find Too Late for Love to be extraordinary. It's a well-polished and well-versed song that I actually really enjoy. Uh, So, yeah, let's get on to the rating, shall we? So, what's my rating for this song? I've been kicking around everything from a 9, 9.5. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a 10. I love this song. And um, what you'll see here in a little bit, I'm not saying it's a 10 because it's Sweden, because generally I'm not a fan of the Swedish entries. Uh, But this is my favorite song from Sweden since Euphoria. This is a very nice, fun, happy song that I really connect to and really enjoy. I love the choir sounds. I love how strong it sounds. I love the hope and optimism the song brings. It just is a refreshing song, and it feels a lot more genuine. A lot of the times, to me personally, the Swedish songs feel a little plastic and a little formulaic. And though this one has elements of that because it is a pop song with a choral mix, uh, it just feels a little bit more genuine. I think John has a lot to play with in the part there uh, where it feels more genuine and authentic. I mean, when he's getting the reaction from the people, he seems like he's genuinely touched by their reaction and genuinely just, thank you so much. I love that you all appreciate my song. I, I get that feeling from him and his personality just shows on stage. So yeah, for me, it's a 10. It's a uh, very nice song. If this were to win Eurovision 2019, I would not be disappointed or sad or angry or all oh, Sweden wins again. No, you get genuine happiness from me if this song is to win the competition. So uh, is this song a contender or a pretender? Is it a contender to win the competition at Eurovision 2019? Yes, this is a contender and a front runner to win Eurovision 2019. Now, Sweden, as we know, does very well anyways, even if they put in a song that's 
at average or a little below average, it still is going to get a very high boost from the juries. What's going to determine the fate of Too Late for Love this year is going to be the televotes, and if it gets the amount of televotes it needs to win the competition. But this is definitely a contender, and I would say it's one of the top 10 contenders to win Eurovision 2019. Uh, so as a contender to qualify, yeah, it's, it's going to qualify. It's an automatic qualifier pretty much just by showing up. Uh, it's a very good song, and Sweden does have that lack of enemies, I guess, or more so a lot of support originally from a lot of countries. So uh, Sweden's kind of been at least the gold standard of performance at Eurovision, as all their songs have generally placed in the top ten in recent memory. So... Uh, this is going to do very well, and again, it's a song that if it does do well, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's because it was sweet. No, I'm going to be genuinely happy for this song. This is a good song on any scale, no matter what country it were to come from. If you know it came from uh, Montenegro, it would still be a fantastic song. So it's not just because it's sweet, and I genuinely love this song. <laughs> So let's take a look at Sweden at Eurovision, my rankings versus the Eurovision Song Contest official results. And this will prove that I'm not a Sweden fanboy, and if I authentically like a Swedish song, uh, it shows. So 2015, Mans Zemmerlau with Heroes, I didn't care for that much. I thought it was an okay song, but it was nothing to write home about, and I thought it sounded completely generic. I had it ranked number 27th on my list, and it won the entire song contest. 2016, Franz, If I Were Sorry, was actually my favorite Swedish song of the past four years. I had it ranked as number 15, and it finished fifth in the competition. 2017, Robin Bengston, I Can't Go On, I hated that song. I thought it was terrible. I still don't care for that song. <laughs> I had it ranked at number 38, and it finished fifth in the competition. And then last year, 2018, Benjamin Ingrosso, Dance You Off, I had him at number 25, and it finished seventh in the contest. And yeah, I found it to be okay. It wasn't my favorite song, but I liked it okay. This year, by far is my favorite Swedish entry, and I totally expect this song to end up in my top 15. Now, where it'll end up, I don't know. It might even sneak into my top 10. I'm still going through the songs and trying to figure it all out. Songs are rising and falling as each day passes for me, and I'm trying to figure out which direction they'll all go in. But I do love this song, and it's worthy of a 10 that I gave it, in my opinion. It's just a very nice entry, a very warm song, and... It, this song never fails to make me happy every time I listen to it. So, great job, Sweden. Thank you for watching my review of Sweden at Eurovision 2019. Uh, we're getting closer. It's still quite a ways off, but we are definitely getting closer to Eurovision 2019. I still really need a favor from all of you, if you can. I will put a link in the comments section and pin it at the top. I need to know your top 10s for the countries that you want to win Eurovision 2019 or your top 10 favorites. I am giving them their appropriate points, and I've got so far about 200 responses. My goal is to get to 1,000, so I'm well on my way of being able to reach that. I'm going to put out that video of your top 10s. It'll be out on May 1st, 2019, so uh, I still got over a month to collect, and I'm a fifth of the way there, so uh, I appreciate anybody who submitted your top 10 so far. And if you haven't, or maybe this is the first video of mine you've watched, please feel free to add your top 10s. I'm just trying to get diverse opinions from everywhere. So uh, get those to me, and I will have that list of your top 10s. And the Lethargic Sloth channel champion will be represented on a banner on my channel after we determine the winner. So, uh... Okay, I've got about, I think, 10 more reviews to do. Uh, I'm still going through reaction videos. If you have a request for any uh, song you want me to uh, react to from a current year Eurovision singer, I will do that. Um, and I will do others after the contest. I'll definitely uh, look more into some of the older songs, and I'll probably go through 2014 and the years I haven't uh, checked out yet. And... Uh, 
review those years, rank those countries, uh, do uh, maybe even do mini reviews per per song, and actually guess where I think they rank because I have no idea where they actually ranked in the content. So it'd be interesting to see if I'm right on about how they finished. So. Yeah, I'm going to keep this rolling even after Eurovision 2019, so please subscribe, come along for the ride, and join the Lethargic Sloth Eurovision family. So, for now, Lethargic Sloth, out.